Water, water everywhere, at least almost everywhere around California. One to two weeks of rain coming our way. A lot of people have questions. What is this rain? What are these storms gonna do for us? What will they do to us? What are the impacts? And what should you do to prepare yourself? Well, luckily, we have some experts coming up next right here on OES News In Depth. All right, Sean Boyd here at uh, Cal OES headquarters in Sacramento, California. We are Skyping right now with the National Weather Service Sacramento office, and we have four uh, experts who have joined us to talk about the weather, this crazy weather that we're having right now. With us is Alan Haynes from the National Weather Service California Nevada River Forecast Center, Liz Bryson from the Department of Water Resources, as well as Brooke Bingaman and Michelle Mead, both from the Sacramento office. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here with us today on this lovely, lovely wet day. Welcome, thanks for having us. Hey, we appreciate it. Listen, uh, obviously the reason we called you up today, we wanted to talk about this, uh, this very wet weather that we're having. Um, we've been used to drought for the last several years, obviously here in California. This to me, it, it reminds me of what we used to get. Is this normal? Is this what our normal used to be? Well, you kind of have to put normal into context. Uh, this particular storm um, that we're currently seeing right now would be constituted as a normal storm. However, the system, the weather system that we're looking at for this weekend is one of those out of the average storms, meaning we haven't seen rainfall rates um, or runoff potential in 10 to 15 years, and in some locations, 25 years. There's that much moisture that's going to be coming into central and uh, portions of Northern California this coming weekend. Okay, so what you're saying then is this heavy precipitation is going to affect California as a whole, uh, both from Northern California through the Central Coast all the way down to Southern California. Am I getting that right? Yeah, there are going to be um, more winter impacts across the Pacific Northwest, and then the very wet, heavy precipitation is more from the Central and Southern Sacramento Valleys into the San Joaquin Valleys, and then also into the Sierra Nevada, um, Central and Southern Sierra Nevada. Okay, now one of, one of the things that I've been reading about is this... Uh, this elusive and mysterious atmospheric river. We've heard about this, uh, especially going back to December, uh, a couple of years ago when we had uh, some very strange, uh, well, we had a lot of weather that came through Northern California in December. Uh, and then for the El Nino, uh, we had an atmospheric river that kind of fell apart. What is an atmospheric river? Uh, describe it, if you would, in everyday average Joe terms. And, and what does it mean to our weather pattern and what we're getting right now? The easiest definition, I think. Go ahead, Brooke. I, I was just going to say an atmospheric river is basically a very long plume of moisture that travels across the Pacific Ocean. And then when it hits the West Coast, wherever it hits along the West Coast, then that's where the brunt of the storm occurs. It's okay. typically a very narrow band of very heavy precipitation. Okay, good. So how is this atmospheric river, this band of precipitation, what does it have in store for us and how far out can you predict? How far can we predict is, well, there's pretty good confidence that um, in the next uh, seven day forecast that this is definitely going to be impacting California. Um, and in terms of what this will bring, the major impacts of course are going to be widespread flooding that occurs, especially across uh, where the actual plume hits, which will be generally from the I-80 corridor southward from about Tahoe to Kings Canyon, if you want cities to kind of put it in perspective. Um, and besides widespread flooding, that's urban flooding, that's small stream flooding, that's our main rivers that are also going to be flooding. The soils are already saturated from the current or from the recent storm that we just had. So there's also going to be a higher likelihood for mudslides, uh, debris flows, power outages, so there really is going to be a, a wide array of impacts to California. And it really, obviously, it depends on, on where you live, depending on the level of flooding and the type of flooding that uh, you may or may not encounter. Um, you were saying that this is a once in a 10 to 25 year kind of a storm. That takes us back to 1997. And if anybody was here in 1997, obviously there, you know, the from December into January, we had great snowfall uh, in December, and then th the snow elevation, if I'm 
memory serves right, kind of raised a little bit, went a little higher, and then things started to melt quite a bit. Then we had the massive flooding that we did all over California, especially uh, from the central up north, um, and I guess some down south. But is that what we're preparing ourselves for now, is maybe something that could potentially uh, arrive to that magnitude? There will be certain areas in the Central Valley, the uh, Sumnus River, um, Old Ferry, Hamilton City. Um, there are areas that are already running high uh, and the amount of snowfall, like you mentioned, we've gotten some pretty good snowfall just in the last 24 to 48 hours that's going to continue into tonight. So we are gonna see some elements of the J January 97, uh, but I don't think it's gonna be as widespread but folks who do um, have a memory of 97, especially, like I said, in the southern Sacramento Valley and the San Joaquin Valley, we do anticipate the impacts there to be a little more um, intense just because of the saturated soils and the flat nature of the valley down there. There's really no place for that water to go once the rivers and streams um, are filled. Is that correct, Liz? Pretty much. Yeah, and Liz, again, is from the Department of Water Resources. Okay, so let me just go ahead. Add something here. Yes. Oh, uh, regarding the this, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of times people are concerned about the snowfall, the lower and mid elevation snow that fell. They they look at the '97 event and see that you know, think of that as a big contributor. It is a contribution, but it's not as big as maybe you might think because the physics involved. You're looking at there's not a lot of heat and cold rain, so you're not really melting a lot of snow. But the little bit, you know, shallow snow layer in the mid and um, lower elevations, especially, that can add a little bit, maybe on the order of 10% uh, to the volume. The main impact of the rising freezing levels with these atmospheric river events is that you're, the whole basin is contributing runoff because water is flowing through the snowpack at higher elevations and down in, into the basin, into the river systems. And that's where we really get the biggest effect is just is having the whole basin contribute to runoff. Right. Now, since we're talking about elevations and snowpack, uh, they just conducted, uh, I believe, uh, the latest or first one of the year, I guess, the um, snowpack uh, measurement analysis. Um, what can you tell me about from a meteorologist's point of view, looking at the drought, looking at the water content, what are you seeing now and what is it telling you? So yeah, the snowpack is running below normal in terms of water content for this time of year. If you look at, we've had a lot of warm systems so far this year, so a lot of it has been liquid. And um, we've been fortunate in a way that the reservoir has been low. So in terms of uh, runoff, you know, we've got wet basins, we've got full, or, or we will have full reservoirs for what we can store for this time of year. What we, we will be adding snowpack this week, which will help. Um, what we're gonna have to look for down the road is you want a bigger snowpack that'll be able to run off and recharge the reservoirs in the spring and early summer. That has yet to be determined. Um, I think it'll it, it'll happen to some degree farther south in this year, but up north here, um, we'd probably wanna see more of a snowpack in terms of water supply. But as far as what we can store, we're pretty much uh, gonna be there by early next week. Okay, so. Uh, looking at then long-term forecasts as far as you know the models are showing you what can you say uh, in terms of being hopeful or maybe um, maybe just taking a look at what the forecast holds with regard to getting the weather cold enough to getting the the kind of temperatures that we need at the right elevations to bring us the kind of snowpack that we need what are the models saying well we can look out what about a about a week at, into the future Okay. Um, and a and week to 10 days and looking out, they do look to be a little cooler systems next week, not, um, not uh, you know, for real low elevation snow, but sort of mid-level. Uh, so that'll help, um, but it's really a question of, of what comes after that in terms of for the rest of January, February are, are kind of the main snowpack building months. So those are what we're gonna have to watch to see how the overall water supply picture um, will evolve. But this. Uh, the, what we're having so far is really helpful. Uh, this is the best we've seen in, in some time, in years, for um, water supply. Okay, and obviously there are people who are gonna be seeing this, they're gonna be watching the news, they're gonna be reading the paper, listening to the radio, looking at their phones about 
the weather that's headed this way, especially coming into this weekend, what should people know, what should they do from a weather point of view? In terms of preparation? Sure. Uh, well, yeah. the big, yeah, the big heads up is that Friday, during the day at least, should be dry. So everyone should really try to utilize that day to prepare for this heavy rain event that will be happening Saturday through Monday. So some of the things we're suggesting are simple, such as clearing out your gutters and nearby storm drains, because we definitely expect ponding of water and flooded roadways. If you live near a small stream or a river, keep in mind that those levels are definitely going to rise quickly over this weekend. Um, other preparedness tips? So for folks who are traveling, uh, especially in the mountain roads, like you all know, we've had rain and snow. Um, but because the soils are so saturated and we're looking at such um, high rainfall amounts in the Sunday through Monday time frame, not only are rock and debris flows going to be increased, but it's not just going to be the burn scars. It's going to be any higher terrain that is susceptible to rock and mudslides during uh, rain events. Those are going to increase. So we definitely recommend that you take a, a look at the Caltrans quick map. Um, and check the road conditions. And keep in mind, there could also be a lot of power outages across parts of California. And if there's a lot of water, uh, it may be difficult for the utility companies to get around and restore power quickly. So I always tell my friends and neighbors to be prepared for at least a couple of days of not having power. So have some extra food that perish and make sure you have lots of extra blankets to stay warm. Absolutely. Uh, listen, great advice. We appreciate it. Are there any final thoughts before we let you go and get back to your work today? We've been coordinating with all of our neighbors, uh, the Department of Water Resources, the Flood Operations Center, the California Nevada River Forecast Center, and all the forecasters at the Weather Service will be here 24-7 monitoring um, the, any flooding that does develop and the forecasts that go into those flooding models. We also want to remind folks that we are anticipating quite a bit of urban flooding. Um, so always remember, turn around, don't drown. Um, you don't know what is under that water. So we want to keep you safe. And especially at nighttime, people take for granted that the road is still there and it might not be. So just remember, turn around, don't drown and stay safe out there. Absolutely. And of course, if they want the latest information, they can keep an eye on the social media from both the National Weather Service, DWR, Cal OES. Um, we want to thank uh, you, Michelle Mead, and, and Brooke and Alan from uh, the National Weather Service, as well as Liz Bryson from DWR. Thank you so much for chatting with us and giving us some great information, some great advice. Stay safe as well, and uh, we'll keep an eye on uh, the weather, just like you folks.